Good morning, Christ United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship. Welcome if you are here live. Welcome if you are tuning in. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord, and we pray that the next hour would help you to just take a deep breath of God's peace and find there all that you need. Through song, through His Word, through connection with others, even if you're at home watching, I just pray that you would sense God in your midst. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, this world is chaotic and difficult and some moments extremely painful. But Father, you offer us peace. You offer us love that drives out fear. You offer us grace for every moment. Thank you. Thank you for those gifts. May these moments of worship remind us of your peace, of your love, of your grace. As we spend time together lifting up your name. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Welcome to worship. online. There we go. Hey, I want to offer just a word of uh, scripture for you before we begin our first song. And uh, this is found in the uh, 108th Psalm. And it goes like this. My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all of my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake in the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you, Lord, among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the sky. Why do we worship God? His faithfulness reaches higher than the skies. His love is uh, higher than the heavens. So we come today to worship and we do that in one way, by singing and offering our praise. So let us stand and let us offer our thanks to him. He is a gracious God, a faithful God. We thank him for his amazing grace. Okay, you can put your hands together. Yes.
awesomeness today Lord we thank you for your goodness and Lord we thank you for your voice that speaks to us speaks into our fears and speaks into our weakness and speaks into our doubts speaks into our hurts and speaks into our love oh God May your ancient words that come to us today from your scripture, Lord, may they be new to us today. For Lord, you are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh Lord, thank you for your words. Speak to us today, I pray. Holy word.
changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, all let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts. We have another song we're going to do but for now just greet one another express uh, your love God's word has brought us together today friends and then uh, you may be seated as we continue allow this to be our prayer today friends as we sing this song speak O Lord speak to us O God Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, blend it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your life. That the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us.
Let me share with you a couple of prayer concerns before we spend some moments in prayer. We uh, have an opportunity to celebrate this week. Bethany and Ryan McGowan gave birth to their fourth child, Emily Catherine, and Sam and Kim are the um, overly proud grandparents. Um, the, good news is that, um, the good news is that Ryan got to the hospital in time. 18 minutes to spare. And the baby was born in the triage bathroom. The next one, she better conceive in the hospital <laughs> or not have any more. So that's, her, that's her choice. That's her choice. So glad she's doing well. The baby was nine pounds, three ounces, right? Yes. yes. So she had to really sleep through the night. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, another praise, Rich Hart has been in the hospital this week, but he is coming home today is our understanding, so we are uh, thankful for that. Um, continued prayers for Lynn and Rich Herringer, Jim and Jane Allen, and Brenda Cocaine is still in the hospital, still struggling with some dizziness. We need to keep praying for her. Pray for our students, staff, college kids are back, high school and elementary kids are headed back. Parents are overly excited. Shh, I didn't say that out loud. But, uh, you know, it's... It's all good until they, like, get ready to graduate, and then parents start freaking out. What's up with that? I would be one of those parents. All right. Let's hold these things up in prayer. One last prayer concern that I was given this morning. Last week, um, we asked you to pray for a 12-year-old or 13-year-old little girl by the name of Lily from Florida. Twelve days ago, she was hit by a car on her way home from, from um, school on her bicycle. This is the niece of Jody Baker Lewis. This morning, they will be disconnecting her from life support. So we just need to pray peace over her family. I cannot imagine, cannot even begin to imagine what they're wrestling with. Let's spend some moments with God. Father God, our hearts are heavy. We cannot imagine being Lily's family, her brother, her mom and dad, her aunt and others. Father, we just pray that your presence would be obvious, that your peace, that your grace, that your comfort would be obvious in that space. Surround this family. Give them exactly what they need for right now and exactly what they need for tomorrow and for every tomorrow ahead. Lord, to be honest, there are things that just are beyond our imagining and sometimes pain that we feel it even though we don't know these people. But we are so thankful that we can come to you in every situation and know that you hear us, that you care for us, that you love us. Walk not just with Lily and her family, but walk with each person, Father, who is struggling today that we're connected to. Those names and faces that flash through our mind, Father, we know you're there, for you're everywhere. We know that you're aware of every detail of that situation, for you know everything. We pray, Father, that they would see you, that we would see you. And in that experience, that we'd be changed. There are so many situations, Father, where physical healing is not an option. But healing from your spirit is such a reality. So pour that out. Pour it out liberally. And we'll continue to praise you in the sunshine and in the rain. On the days we win and the days we lose. On the easy days. And the hard days. For you alone are God. And you alone are worthy of praise. 
Thank you, Father, for the way you're working in and through every situation. Now give us grace that we may hear from your word, that we may lift up your, our voices to you, that we may connect with others, and that that too may change us. We desire to be men and women after your heart, servants of the Most High God, the hands and feet of Christ in this world. We ask all of this in the awesome, powerful, amazing name of Jesus the Christ and all God's people said, Amen. The tune of Jesus loves me. God's word is my life. God's word is my life. God's word is my hope. God's word is my light. And it will guide me home. It might be on this, it might be in something like this. Where is the Word of God for you today? If you have one, just um, show it to God that it means something to you. God's Word is my life. God's Word is my hope. God's word is my light and it will guide me home. Thank you, Sam, Kim, the team. Morning again, church. You guys are almost awake. I appreciate that. If you have a copy of the Word in front of you, um, turn back to the text we began this series on, um, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verses just 16 and 17. So, two weeks ago we began this series talking about the authority of God's Word, and last week we were talking about um, how it was clear that, that, that there was clarity in God's Word that you and I, without any major advanced training, can understand this word and, and, and live by it. Today we want to talk about the sufficiency of this word, the fact that it has everything we need. Next week we're going to conclude this series with a sermon about Scripture's promises that we can stand on. The following week is September 11th and we're going to be worshiping in the park I hope you'll join us. It'll be a 1030 service. We're going to all be together. Uh, we're going to be a witness to the community and invite some first responders to come worship with us as we remember 9-11 and, um, and glean some lessons. So here we are in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. Here's what God's Word says. All Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, correcting, I'm sorry, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. What's it mean to be thoroughly equipped? Well, here's, a, uh, here's something that I could very easily be envious of. This is an Airstream Atlas. B-class motor home on a Mercedes-Benz frame. It is thoroughly equipped. Thoroughly. It ought to be for the price. Just south of $300,000 will get you one of these simply pocket change. And you could be cruising the country thoroughly equipped. Wow. Isn't that incredible? See, I, I could get into that. Alas, I digress. The Bible claims to be able to thoroughly equip us for every good work. I don't know about you, but there have been times that I've said, Lord, quite honestly, this is hard. 
one, um, getting through it, knowing where to start. And, and I need your Holy Spirit, Lord, to help me understand it. Then the really tough part comes in. <laughs> Obedience. Oh, my. I've been at this a year or two, and obedience is still a challenge, isn't it? I'm afraid for all of us. So here's a question that um, we often have running around our brain and we hear from other people. Are we to look for other words from God in addition to those we have in Scripture? Or is Scripture enough? This morning for children's sermon, I, I had a picture of books and I pulled out a stack off my shelf. These are simply six books that I used um, for some of my dissertation work. Six of uh, probably two shelves of books. Good stuff! Not Scripture. Okay. We need to be clear that there is, there is literature and then there's Scripture. Here's what Dr. Wayne Grudem is talking about in his Christian theology when he talks about the sufficiency of Scripture. He says, the sufficiency of Scripture means the Scripture contains all the words of God he intended his people to have. And it now contains all the words of God we need for salvation, for trusting him perfectly, and for obeying him perfectly. We, we can read other stuff, but other stuff always needs to take us back to the word of God. If it does not help us to understand God's word better, don't bother with it. Now, if you're fixing your car, you're probably going to need a manual to do that. I do anyway. But when it comes to how do I live life, how do I understand God, what's God calling me to do? Scripture is all we need. So here's what Scripture says about the sufficiency of Scripture. James 1.18 he, being God, chose to give us birth through the word of truth. That we might be a kind of first fruit of all he created. It's through scripture that he gave us birth. 1 Peter 1.23, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Psalm 119.1, blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. When we walk in obedience to God's word, we are blameless in God's sight. There's not something else we need to read or do to be blameless. If we follow this, we are blameless. And Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed, the things revealed, belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. So now let's come back to our text. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Our goal is to be equipped. When I was an undergrad, I was studying photography. And I thought I knew going in how to develop film and print pictures until I found out, once I got in there, that the way I'd been taught had a bunch of shortcuts in it that didn't result in really good, high-quality images. So I spent years learning how to perfect that craft so that I would be thoroughly equipped as a photographer. The wonderful thing is, now that they've developed digital photography, you don't spend so much time in a dark room, but they've kept all the same words, all the same nomenclature, so I still understand it, which is really cool. But it, it took a long time to become thoroughly equipped. I left Ohio University and headed to Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. I compressed a three-year master's degree into four years so that I could be thoroughly equipped for ministry. A lot of work. A lot of study. But when it comes to who's God, when it comes to what's he calling me to do, when he calls, comes to how do I live a life that reflects the change that has taken place in my heart through grace, that's all I need. One book. It's not a five-minute read. <laughs> 
It's a decades-long process. But every day, there's an opportunity to encounter the Word and allow these, as Sam and the group shared with us, allow these ancient words to transform us, to shape us, to help us. So is it possible to find all that God has said on a particular topic? It is. And we can then find answers to our questions. You see, here's the great thing about Scripture. You can get a concordance. If you don't know what concordance is, it's a book that that lists passages of Scripture based on a word. You can look up a single word, marriage. And every passage, if you get an exhaustive concordance, every passage in the Bible that talks about marriage is listed there in a very simple list. And you can read everything God's Word has to say on marriage or or divorce or, or how to parent your children. Or how to respect your parents. Or on theological topics like the atonement or the person of Christ or the Holy Spirit. I had an opportunity to to dig into one of those parenting passages as part of my dissertation. Because I was working with fathers. My project was on fatherhood. And, And it seemed so simple. It was just a few words. And the more I sat with that text, the more I dug in that text, the more I found other passages that spoke about the same thing, the more I understood this is a lot. Bring up your children with love and discipline is basically what the text says. We've all seen parents who have used love but have lacked discipline. We've seen parents who have overemphasized discipline and lacked love. And both turn out not good results. Scripture says there's got to be both. There's got to be love and instruction. And there's got to be discipline. When there's not, what it says is we exasperate our children. We expect them to know how to behave and we've never taught them. We've got to teach them. At one point in our life, Sharon and I um, were teaching the older boys how to conduct themselves in restaurants. So for about six months, we worked with them at the dinner table on manners. Keep your elbows off the table. Don't burp out loud at the table. Somehow we've forgotten that, but that's another story. Um, You know, all these little etiquette rules. And one day we took them out to a restaurant. Fancy restaurant. I was kind of doing in my head the math as to what dinner was going to cost us. And, and when the waiter came by and said, would you like dessert? And I said, no, I think we're pretty full. I said, just, just the check would be fine. And I'm expecting a check for somewhere around $50. And this is back about 20 years ago. And the waiter looks at me and he says, um, yeah, there is no check. And I said, what? He said, you see that guy over in the corner? I said, yeah, who is he? He said, I don't know, I figured you knew him. He paid your check. I walked over and I said, "Uh, thank you. What's the occasion? He said, I just saw your boys and they were just, they were so well behaved. And and you know, we need to encourage one another. And I went, wow. I guess all that work was worth 50 buck dinner. I'm I'm good with that. I almost wanted to say to him, what are you doing next Saturday? We'll be back. I didn't, I didn't, I was good. So, so pick a topic, find a concordance, dig in the Word, and find out what the Word says before you go to another book. What's this say? Dig hard. It will take study. So here's some things we can learn about the application of the sufficiency of Scripture, okay? So if we talk about the fact that all we need is to be a person of this one book, How does that apply to us on a day-to-day basis? Four things I want you to remember. One, everything God wants to tell us about a topic is to be found in Scripture. But this does not mean that the Bible answers all the questions we have. Don't you hate that? You know, there's there's nothing in the Scriptures that say, Daryl, your production sheet and your order of worship should go like this. Scripture doesn't say how to do Sunday morning worship. I not tell you how to do worship, period, except do it. Scripture doesn't tell us what the proper posture is for prayer. Should we kneel, lay flat on the floor, face down, stand up, sit? What should it be? 
You see, in Scripture, sometimes God offers a mystery. And sometimes he offers liberty or freedom. It, it doesn't tell us what time you should eat lunch or dinner. Or in my case, you know, second breakfast, mid-afternoon snack, nighttime ice cream. It's about six meals a day I eat. I like to eat. There are some things that God chose not to tell us. He did not choose to tell us whether our loved ones who have gone on to glory know what's going on here. Boy, I wish he'd told me that. The only thing I can conjecture is that it says that in heaven there is no weeping or crying, and I'm sure there's some things that I have done in the last uh, 30-some years since my mom passed that would make her cry, so I'm guessing she probably doesn't know. That's probably a good thing for her. He says, you know what, that's not that important right now. Here's what you need to know. Take care of this first. Worry about that later. Okay? So, yes, he's willing to, sh God has been, has chosen to share with us all kinds of information on all kinds of topics, but not every topic is covered in Scripture. We know Jesus is coming back, we just don't know when. He's not chosen to tell us that. The other thing I think we can learn from Scripture sufficiency is this. We are to add nothing to Scripture. Nothing. There's no other book on my shelf or on any bookshelf that is parallel to this one. If you talk to folks in the Mormon faith, my brother used to be in the Mormon faith, they would say, oh yeah, we accept the Bible, but we have the Book of Mormon, we have Doctrines and Covenants, which are the ongoing revelation of God to the presidents of the Mormon church, and those are all seen as equal. I would contend that when the Bible and the Book of Mormon disagree, they'll choose the Book of Mormon every time. That's a problem. Christian scientists, we believe in the Bible, but the books that Mary Baker Eddy published somehow come out above the Bible. That's a problem. If someone says, you know what, I have a word from the Lord, and it supersedes Scripture. If you ever hear that, don't walk away, run. Run. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Somebody may get a word from the Lord drawing you to a particular passage, or helping you to unpack a particular passage, but in addition to, not a chance. God made it clear. He's revealed everything he wants us to know. Period. It's in the book. Read the book. Third thing. Nothing is sin that is not forbidden in Scripture. These three examples you may find silly, but they illustrate what can happen among some folks. How many of you have seen the movie or the play Footloose? What's the preacher all upset about? Dancing. Can't be dancing. No. No. No dancing in the church. Well, do you know that the Old Testament tells the story of David dancing before the Lord in his undies? And it says that God was pleased. How do you rectify that with no dancing? Now, to be sure, there is some forms of dancing that can um, lead to temptation. And temptation is the issue, though, not the dancing. Okay? Certain clothes. I had a woman in a Bible study one time who talked to me about her pastor of her home church, and, and he had rules about clothing. Women were never allowed to wear pants. Dresses could not be above the ankle. Sleeves could not be above the wrist. No jewelry except wedding rings on men or women. If men wore a necktie, it was a sin. Where's that in the book? I don't see that in the text. And when somebody gives you a rule like that, simply tell them, show me that in the text. You can't or you should. Where is that in the text? If they can't show you verse, chapter and verse, nope. One of my favorites is I was going to the hospital one day to visit a guy who was having heart surgery. His family was pretty extensive, and they attended several different churches. Some attended my congregation, some another congregation. At the time, 
I was um, taking an EMT class, so it was common for me to have in my minivan a 20-cup air pot of coffee and a cardboard box with styrofoam cups, a container of, um, of non-dairy creamer, and a container of sugar and stirs. And so that morning, I filled the air pot, and I went off to the hospital. I got to the ER waiting room, or to the OR waiting room, and I pulled out my coffee and my cups. Anybody want coffee? And I'm pouring out coffee. And a pastor who some of the family were connected with walked in, and I said to him, I said, hey, I've got a cup of mine. Would you like a cup of coffee? He says, no, I'm a Christian. Excuse me? I said, no. I said, do you want a cup of coffee? He said, yeah. I don't drink coffee. I'm a Christian. To this day, I don't know what one has to do with the other. I cannot find a connection any place in Scripture. And people will say the same thing about alcohol. And, and trust me, the United Methodist Church at its founding had a strong stance against alcohol because John Wesley and his brother Charles saw it destroying the fabric of England. Husbands were spending their family's income on alcohol and they were in poverty. They were addicted. It was causing abuse. And so we took a very strong stand against that. Our book of discipline now gives a little more room. But might we remember that Jesus' first miracle was turning water into what? Wine. Now, to be sure, it was weak wine. Their, their process of fermentation left them with about 3% alcohol, and you always cut it with water. Scripture universally says drunkenness is a sin. It does not say drinking alcohol is a sin. We need to be clear on that. For you, if you have an addiction issue, alcohol may be a sin for you. You cannot universally apply that to everybody else. If Scripture doesn't stand there, you shouldn't be standing there. By the way, even though my body does not like coffee, I still really like coffee. I just can't tolerate it anymore. All right. Last thing. Nothing more is required beyond scriptural requirements. Look, salvation is by grace through faith, period. It doesn't matter if you never walked down the aisle up front. It doesn't matter if you've never been baptized. The thief on the cross is not taken down from the cross and baptized so that Jesus can say, today you're going to be with me in paradise. It's not about belonging to a particular denomination. There are a lot of denominations out there believe that they are going to be the only ones in heaven. Are they in for a surprise? Quite honestly, so are the rest of us. I'm convinced I'm going to get the glory. I'm going to look at God and go, seriously? How'd they get in? And God's going to say, it's grace. You see, it's not about, yes, you're saved by grace, but you better straighten up or you're not saved. Should we straighten up? Absolutely. Should we get baptized? I think it's a great idea. And, and, and the commitment it takes to step out of the pew is nothing compared to the commitment it's going to take you to live an obedient life. I get all that. But it's not required. You get that? The sinner's prayer is not written somewhere in Third Opinions, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. A good sinner's prayer is, Help! There are some people who think if you don't pray their sinner's prayer, it didn't count. And you can't just be baptized. You have to be baptized in certain water, certain mode. No, it's not the way it works. Here's reality, folks. Scripture says if you will study this book, you'll have everything you need. You'll be thoroughly equipped. In fact, the armor of God talks about all these defensive pieces of armor that we have and where they come from, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit. That's the only offensive weapon, isn't it? The sword of the spirit. And it is what again? The word of God. This is what we need. Get into this. I'm always stunned by people that are struggling in their faith. And when you ask them, they don't ever read scripture. Wow, that's like struggling to fix your car and refusing to pick up the owner's manual, a repair manual, or ask a mechanic. Like in my case, I'd never get anything done that way. 
I'm just not that smart. Maybe we need to admit that we're not that smart and we need God's help through his word to guide us and direct us. Let's pray. Father, may we find ourselves hungering and thirsting for your word first and foremost. Give us grace, Father, through your Holy Spirit to understand it so that we can live by it and we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're your kids loved by you. Guide us and direct us, Father. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. I'm going to invite you in some way to respond to what God has uh, spoken to us about today. So you just respond how God is leading you. I'm going to invite you to stand and offer your hearts to him today. You can come. You can stay where you're at. But um, give yourself to him, okay? Let's stand and allow his spirit to breathe upon us. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I
God, thank you for hearing every expression, every thought in this place today. Lord, thank you for your word that uh, is always uh, living and active, working within us, and may it continue to work with us in the, in the days and in the life ahead. God, we give you thanks for all of your grace for us and your love and for speaking to us through the ages. And Lord, now we offer our gifts of tithes and offerings as another way of expressing our thanks for, for all that you've given us and all that you've done and for all that you've provided for us physically. Uh, spiritually and otherwise so Lord accept these gifts now as we bring them together those here those that are watching online use them so that others may know the living word of Christ in the name of Jesus we pray and everyone said amen amen you may be seated as the offering attendants wait upon us if you have a, because you count form, you can drop that in the plate as it comes by. And if you're watching from uh, someplace uh, beyond these walls, if you're part of another church, we ask you support your local church first. But thank you for your ongoing support. For his uh, closing um, announcements, I have one that I'm going to share with you, and that's, uh, it's in the bulletin, and I realize it may not apply as much to those that are very committed to this particular service, but if you have any interest in, in being part of a, of a singing group like a choir, just let me know, and I don't have anything specifically um, engraved in my mind what is going to work in these new days and what isn't but I'd like to know if you're interested and then we'll work from there so let me know if you'd be interested in singing in a choir typically the choir sang in the early service and the late service um, but you know there's opportunities for for this service as well so let me know okay thank you thank you Sam a couple other quick announcements our car cruise second annual was on Monday night we got it in in between the raindrops, had more cars than we had last year, had some absolutely incredible pork. Oh, my gosh. It was, it was off the charts. 
So thanks to all those that helped out. The kids realized about $600 in donations for the youth ministry. And it was a great time to connect with the community. So we'll keep doing things like that. Hey, on Tuesday, the staff is going to be um, sequestered, so to speak, for the day. We're going to do a staff planning retreat. So don't look for us in the office. You can text us, but you may not get a response for a while. Uh, We're going to be looking at the fall and what's ahead of us and, and trying to discern where God's leading us. The Parker's anniversary celebration is next Saturday, September 3rd at 1 o'clock here at the church. If you are planning on going, please be sure you've RSVP'd to the family, and there's instructions to do that in the bulletin. Um, As I said, two weeks from today, we will be in the park, 1030, one service. Consider being there. Last thing, Disciple Bible Study. This is a study manual. We've been talking about this. This is a great way to learn God's Word. You read God's Word five days a week. One day a week you read this, and the seventh day of the week you're in group with me for two and a half hours. It's a lot, I know. But you will know God's Word a lot better at the end. Um, There's two information meetings coming up. They're in your bulletin. Uh, A week from Tuesday at 12.30 in the afternoon we're going to do one. The following Monday, the 12th of September, the Monday after Labor Day, um, 6.30 in the evening. Um, please, if you can, let me know on your because you can't sheet you're least interested. It means you're coming to the meeting, you're going to look at it. You may look at this and go, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing it. It's okay. But we want to make sure we kind of have a sense as to the interest, all right? Excellent. We're going to close. Oh, one last thing. There's a note on the back of the sermon notes about the latest church council decision and the implications of that and an information meeting we're having as a church. Pay attention to that, please. And we're going to close in song. in peace. May God's peace settle on you in such a way today that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt he's journeying with you every moment. Amen.